Hello everyone, we are talking about gut tube and the body cavities. This is the last section that uh, we will be talking about in this presentation. It includes diaphragm and thoracic cavity. We will take a look on <coughs> the development of diaphragm, how septum transversum and thoracic cavity come into play, uh, how the diaphragm is formed and what are the clinical correlates of diaphragm. Uh, hope you're excited about this it's a very nice very sweet and very important lecture so let's talk about septum transversum it is a thick plate of mesodermal tissue uh, it lies between the thoracic cavity and the stalk of the yolk sac so it incompletely separates the thoracic and the abdominal cavities there are two large openings, the pericardioperitoneal folds. These are the pericardioperitoneal folds or canals on each side of the foregut. This is the foregut. So now this is the septum transversum. These are the pericardioperitoneal canals on each side of the foregut. So let's see how this comes into play. Lung buds grow caudolaterally in the pericardioperitoneal canals. In this region, the lung buds tend to grow caudal, caudolaterally towards outside, towards the body cavity, they tend to grow. Our canals are small <coughs> and lungs are growing at a very fast pace. These are narrow spaces. So the lungs now tend to encroach on the mesenchyme of the body wall dorsally, ventrally and laterally. This was ventral, this was dorsal and lateral is away from the body. So ventral and lateral expansion is posterior to the pleuropericardial folds. It is posterior to the pleuropericardial folds. However, initially, the pleuropericardial folds appear as small ridges which are projecting into the thoracic cavity. These are the uh, pleuropericardial folds which are projecting into the primitive thoracic cavity. Now, Oh, the thoracic cavities, uh, the mesoderm of the body splits into the definitive wall of the thorax and the pleuropericardial membranes. Alright, uh, the mesoderm of the body, it splits into two parts, the definitive wall of the thorax and the pleuropericardial membranes. Pleuropericardial membranes are actually the extensions of pleuropericardial folds. Now, here, these are the pleuropericardial membranes which are actually the extensions of pleuropericardial folds. They contain cardinal veins and the phrenic veins. Cardinal and phrenic veins are the contents contained in them. Now, descent of heart and position changes. It, causes, it shifts the common cardinal vein towards the midline. The common cardinal vein now occupy the midlines. And the pleuropericardial membranes are now drawn out like mesenchides. Here, the lung is growing, the heart is shifting. All of these causes the pleuropericardial membrane to draw out like mesentery. They fuse with each other and with the root of the lung. They fuse with each other and with the root of the lung to form the pericardial and two pleural. This is the pericardial cavity. And these are the two individual pleural cavities. And how are they uh, formed? They are formed by the fusing of pleuropericardial membranes with each other and with the root of the lungs. Pleuropericardial membrane form the fibrous pericardium in the adults. Now the formation of diaphragm. So pleuropericardial can, pleuroperitoneal canals are the connection between the pleural and the peritoneal cavities as is evident from the name. <coughs> they are crescent shaped pleuroperitoneal folds which encroach on the thoracic cavity. 
they project into the caudal end of the pleuroperitoneal folds now the pleuroperitoneal they are projecting into the caudal ends of the pleuroperitoneal folds gradually they extend medially and ventrally fusing with esophagus and septum transversum esophagus which was <laughs> lying in the midline and, sept uh, and septum transversum they fuse with it the fusion causes pleuroperitoneal membrane to close off the connection between the pleural and the peritoneal cavities the pleural cavity lies above the peritoneal cavity lies below this fusion of pleuroperitoneal <laughs> membrane with the developing esophagus as well as the um, uh, the septum transversum causes um, it to close off the connection between the pleural and the peritoneal cavities. The expansion of the pleural cavity relative to mesenchyme of the body wall adds a peripheral rim to the pleuroperitoneal fold. This is the peripheral rim. It is due to the expansion of the pleural cavities because the lungs are growing at a very rapid rate as compared to the body wall. Um, mesenchyme of the body wall, it adds a peripheral rim to the pleuroperitoneal fold. <laughs> now, the myoblasts from uh, C3, C4 and C5, they penetrate the membrane to form the muscular portions of the diaphragm. Now, it is the fourth week. The septum transversum lies opposite to the cervical somites. The nerve components of C3, C4 and C5 grow into the septum through pleuropericardial folds. In sixth week, developing diaphragm is now at the level of thoracic somites due to rapid growth of the dorsal part of the embryo as compared to the ventral part. Dorsal part of the embryo, ventral part of the embryo, dorsal part you can um, easily make out the dorsal part as the part where the vertebrae are being formed. Some dorsal diaphragmatic bands originate at the level of L1. Now, phrenic nerve, very important. <coughs> it supplies the diaphragm with motor and sensory innervations. A few lower intercostal thoracic nerves also provide the sensory information to the peripheral part of the rim. The rim that was developed because of expanding lung as compared to the mesenchyme of the body wall that is <coughs> supplied by a few lower thoracic intercostal nerves. So now um, uh, the diaphragm consists of or is formed by septum transversum which forms the central tendon plus pleuroperitoneal membranes plus muscular components from, C, uh, from somites at C3, C4 and C5 e plus esophageal mesentery in which the crura develop. All of these come together to form the diaphragm. So now we'll talk about any defects in the process of uh, diaphragm formation. These defects are commonly caused, uh, known as diaphragmatic hernias. Con now, congenital diaphragmatic <coughs> hernia has a frequency of 1 per 2000. It is mostly on the left side. It is due to failure of one or both pleuroperitoneal membranes to close the pericardioperitoneal canals. Important aspect, pleuroperitoneal membranes but, uh, to close the pericardioperitoneal canal, the communication between the pericardial and the peritoneal um, areas. The abdominal viscera can enter into the pleural cavity. Abdominal viscera in the chest push the heart anteriorly and compress the lungs. The lungs are usually hypoplastic, they are not formed pro properly, which may lead to death in case of a large defect. So now let's talk about uh, parasternal hernia. It is a small, in this uh, hernia we have a small part of muscular fibers of the diaphragm that fail to develop. Where did the muscular fibers of the diaphragm come from? From C3, C4 and C5 somites. 
So, a small peritoneal sac with intestinal loops may enter the chest between sternal and costal origins of the diaphragm. So, we might have a small uh, peritoneal sac with intestinal contents within the chest. Now, we have esophageal hernia. Esophageal hernia is due to congenital shortness of the esophagus. Here, the esophagus is short as a result of which the stomach is being pulled up. Upper portion of the stomach are retained in the thorax. This is the portion of stomach that is being retained within the thorax. Stomach is constricted at the level of diaphragm. Obviously, a diaphragm in itself has a central tendon and muscular fibers. It is stretched and it uh, constricts the uh, stomach at its level. So, this was all about diaphragmatic hernias, uh, the development of diaphragm and how, a sep how different um, bodily cavities are separated by the diaphragm. The clinical aspects of diaphragmatic development <coughs> are very important. Always keep that in mind. Uh, uh, the patient uh, may have symptoms or may simply come with dysphagia and you may investigate the patient to find out that the patient has some form of esophage uh, of uh, diaphragmatic anomaly or diaphragmatic hernia. It is very important to keep a high clinical suspicion for these conditions. Uh, I hope you like this lecture. For further lectures, keep watching Sicardia.com.